we got up. We got up. Yeah, we got up. We got up. We got up. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, we did. We got up. And then, and then, and then, and then, oh yeah, we had breakfast. We had breakfast. Yeah. And then, and then we played and we played some more, but then we jumped on the bed. Oh God, that was so much fun. We had so much fun. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We jumped. 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 And it was so much fun. But then my mom, well, she said no. So that's why Sammy is now in timeout. But you know what? We, we like tried to do some other things. We went outside and we picked flowers and we made a brocade and we gave it to my mom. When then she kind of liked us then. Cause you know what? Well, you know, when you do things for mom, that's always fun, you know? And then, and then, and then we ate lunch. Do you guys know how to make mac and cheese? Cause I surely, surely don't know how to make mac and cheese. And I tried. And then it burned in my microwave and it was really, 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 really gross. Oh my gosh, it was really, really gross. And my mom, she didn't know what to do. She said, ew, now you have to clean that up. She said, you guys are making such a mess. I need you guys to go to your room. So what did we do again? We jumped on the bed and we jumped on the bed and we jumped on the bed. And oh my gosh, that was awful. We Hello, had can you hear us? We fell off. Put the volume up. <laughs> we fell off the bed and then, and then Sammy got hurt and so did I. And that was, that was our day. So if you guys could tell us, tell me something to do so that we could go play and have so much fun, it would be really, 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 I mean, really, 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 really good. So thank you guys. And, and I'm going to go back and see if Sammy can go play with me now. Mm. But Hey guys, thanks for coming to Young Life tonight. Uh, I always love getting to speak um, and share with you guys. It is an honor. You guys are all such wonderful young leaders and um, young people that I'm just um, always stoked to get to talk to you and especially about one of my favorite things, which is Jesus. Um, so tonight um, I have a Bible passage that I want to read, but um, there's a couple things going on here. And the main thing um, like the theme for tonight, I guess, is um, kind of like our need and where Jesus comes in um, because he is the best news ever. And something I've been thinking about recently just more is like how he was like a real person and what that means because like he's still kind of, you know, a real person like in heaven. So like we do have the ability for this friendship um, and this very like real relationship. And that's something that I have and always I've always I feel like had a relationship but it's getting more real like as I grow so I read some of these stories in the Bible differently now thinking about um what it would be like to be there and to be like actually seeing Jesus um and also two years ago I've been looking at my pictures and I was in Israel two years ago so I've been having all this like oh my gosh like so cool it was like a real place and there's real things and um it's just so real um, it's really cool. So um, I'm just going to read over the whole story first, and then I'm going to go back through and point some things out. So if you guys have Bibles, um, I'm reading from Mark chapter 10. Um, this is a really cool story. Um, Jesus was on his way. Um, they were traveling, and they're walking down, you know, dusty road um, on their way, kind of going like north into like on a multi-day journey to Jerusalem. So on this day, he was coming to Jericho. Um, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples, um, a great crowd. Um, um, he, so he, he's being like followed by his disciples and a great crowd. Okay. Um, and this guy named Bartimaeus, he's a blind beggar. Um, he is the son of a guy named Timaeus. He was sitting by the roadside, like beggars normally do. And uh, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth walking by, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many told him to stop um, and told him to be silent. But he cried out all the more. He said, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. And they, they called the blind man saying to him, take heart, get up. He is calling you. And he threw off his cloak, sprang up, and um, came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, 
rabbi, which means teacher, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, go on your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way, which is a crazy story um, because that's a miracle, right? Um, So kind of setting the stage for this, like um, Bartimaeus was a beggar. He was blind. Like, so he made his living. He survived by like begging. Um, And people in those days probably, you know, they know that you can't do anything about it. So people are, you know, are willing to give. And that um, is how he got through life. Um, And people probably um, paid him some attention, but not much. Um, But he was definitely like a known figure in the town. Um, But I think it's amazing just kind of like going through this, that um, like, as soon as he hears that it's Jesus, somehow he knows like, I got that guy can heal me like he goes to Jesus and starts yelling out because he knows that like he has the thing that he needs like that he wants so desperately which is to see which to me I'm like that's like a crazy level of faith like he has this knowledge like how did he know like he probably might have heard stories about Jesus that he could like heal people um but just to like hear this commotion and be like, Hey, what's that going on? Like, what's that noise? Like somebody having a party over there? Like who's here? What's going on? And to be like, Oh, that's the guy. That's the guy. And like, I got to do whatever I can. And so he's like now moving and yelling to the point that people are like, Shh, like go away. Like he's not going to talk to you. And he's so like brave, but also like in faith, he's like, I have to get a hold of this guy. And I think it's just so, oh, it's so beautiful. And like, he's probably very desperate. Obviously, I would be very desperate if I was blind. Um, But I think it's really interesting that he didn't, um, like, if we're a beggar, like, he didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for um, food, like he asked for from everyone else. Like, he clearly knew something was different about Jesus and went all the way, like, deep to, like, the big thing. Um, which is just like really, um, neat on, on like his faith level. But then he also knew that he needed mercy from Jesus. Like he said, have mercy on me, like, listen to me, like hear my request. And the fact that like, he knew that Jesus would want to hear it, um, and was willing to listen. Um, like that's how he got his attention was like, have mercy on me. So he recognized his position as like needing Jesus. And so he wouldn't have gotten Jesus's attention, like without knowing that he needed um, mercy from him. Um, And that's like, so he like recognized who Jesus was as Lord, as healer, as the guy that could restore his sight like he recognized who he was. Um, and so from that, he was able to like call out and be very confident in his request. Um, and so, um, sorry, I'm reading my notes here. Um, I think this level of belief is really awesome. Um, but it's because he just like, trusted like he knew he was so broken and he like knew Jesus had the answer and so when I read that I go like do do I know that I'm that broken and that Jesus is my only answer and so um that's kind of what I wanted to talk about tonight um and that has happened um oh one more thing um he so when he gets healed he gets healed like immediately he's like sure here's your sight miracle. Um, and then it says that he, um, followed him. He started following Jesus and it was like this, like got healed, followed. Like he is now like walking with Jesus, which is what we're all called to do. Um, and so I think, um, I've known that I, I've so many times I've been in a place where we get to the point where we know we need his mercy on us. Um, we're all like broken and, um, desperate, right? Like, um, this world isn't great. We've all sinned. We've all been sinned against, like we've all hurt people and have been hurt. And so, um, but it takes a lot to get to the point of being, of like crying out. Right. And so, um, 
but I think that's like right where Jesus wants us. And I think even during this time of like the coronavirus, like they're like, we all need to be brought to the place where we know our own need for him. Um, and the greatest thing of course, is that he sees way past all our physical needs and goes right to our spiritual needs. And he knows that like, we need life. Like we need to know what fullness is, like what life is and it's in him. Um, it's in like, he died for us. He rose for us. Like that great, great news is that, um, now like we have the ability to commune with him. We have a very real relationship with him. Like if we want it, um, because he will go after that and make sure that our, our spirits are whole. Um, so that happened to me, like when I was like six, like the first time I was like, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I also am a sinner. I need Jesus. Um, and so, but it's a journey, like that's continually happened to me on new levels. Um, kind of like him showing me where I need even more mercy. Um, and then also like crazy times. I think one of the things about this story that, um, I kind of wanted to go, like, there's like the big spiritual need that we all have that he addresses. Um, but then there's like just things in our life, right? Like, um, things that we pray for, things that we need, things that, um, are like what we want and our desires or how we need to grow or where we're going to do what, like decisions that we're making, like we need answers. And so, um, I want to encourage you guys that like, we can cry out to him, like for those things, like for, and he wants to give us like the best. So, like it might not be the answer that we're looking for in this story Bartimaeus like knew like he didn't just ask for what would get him by today like he didn't just ask for food he didn't just ask for money he like he went big right and I think so many times like I don't go big like I ask for this thing this is the solution that I see but like God has so much more for us I think that we don't even know and like we can be encouraged to like ask for that and cry out for those things 